to slide on. There it is, ready to go. Okay, materials you're going to need is you're going to need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You're going to need eight Schedule 40 unions. This is a union to where two pipes go together. Eight of those. You're going to need a piece of wire. This diameter is perfect. It comes from a yard stake from a political sign. 128 millimeter pull of some sort. You're going to need two of these. And you're going to need two of these wires, by the way. You're going to need two of these. This is a Schedule 40 Y that has for a 2 inch Y into a Schedule 44 inch. Two of those. This is an end cap for 4 inch thin wall. You need two of those because they just happen to fit nicely in there. You're going to need a short piece of 3 inch thin wall. PVC and some end caps for that. You're going to need an old vacuum cleaner or some sort of vacuum pump and some vacuum hose. That's pretty much it except for a couple of 10 foot uh, sections of Schedule 40 or every how long you want to make your unit. They're 10 feet long at the store so every how many you need. We just need two because we've got 20 foot run we need to cover. That's all your materials. Tools required aren't very extensive. We're going to need a, a little drill, be a plug in drill, portable, whatever. A Dremel with a little grinding stone on the end. A, ta a nice tapered one's pretty handy. Going to need a Phillips screwdriver. One with a long shaft would be especially useful. You're going to find that out later why. Some sandpaper or emery paper. A drill bit that's three-eighths or maybe a half if that's handy for you. And a quarter inch bit. Hacksaw or a multi-purpose blade, something that will cut plastic. You're going to need something to glue plastic. So this is an all-purpose pipe cement for PVC pipe. Uh, also, you can use. Some, we'll need some epoxy glue, something that will glue metal, stone, general purpose. Then you're going to need some silicon lubricant. You can use either a spray can, or you can use the uh, liquid in a bottle that just sprays out. Then you need a tape measure. That's pretty much it. Okay, now that we have all of our parts that we need to gather it up and all of our tools we're going to start actually creating the vacuum delivery tube we need 20 foot of delivery so what I have here is the, the two four inch PVC pipes that we talked about and I've already split this one right down the middle I did that on a bandsaw uh, I tried it you can also do that with a regular sharp tooth saw that cuts plastics and metals and that sort of thing. That slot you're going to cut needs to be 13 inches long. Once you've cut that slot down the middle where you're, you've got each half equal on each side, then make a few marks across between it. Take your hand saw, cut between those, and a piece like this will come off because what you're creating is this. Now your sawed line goes all the way to the end. So you take the piece that you've cut out of there and we're going to cut a two and three quarter inch piece of this to glue back onto the end. For what reasons I'll explain in a moment. You glue this back on with PVC glue I took some sandpaper and sanded off the rough edges. This is where you're going to be dropping your delivery tube in. 
you'll need this opening at the end of each pipe. Okay, now we have our receiving slot made in the end of each 4 inch pipe. This has been glued back on here, it's good and solid. The next thing we need to build is probably the most complicated thing to build. Not really complicated, it's just time consuming. And that's your closing lid or your slide, which covers your opening, which allows the vacuum to be created inside. So you drop your tube in here. Close this up, turn your vacuum on. We're going to build this now. Okay, to make this, we're going to need three couplings, four inch couplings, like you put the pipe together with. And in order to be able to assemble those, there's a couple things that need to be done first. There's this ridge that runs around the inside where the two pipes butt we're going to have to grind that out and then most couplings you find are going to have some raised lettering on them well in order for these parts to fit together tight we're going to have to grind that lettering down smooth or sand it off with some sandpaper okay these three pieces as you can see have been sanded down the lettering is sanded off the inside is ground out. I just used a Dremel, reached inside, ground it out. Same on all three of them. And this lettering, I just laid a piece of sandpaper flat, some coarse 80 grit sandpaper, laid it fat, flat, went back and forth like that, sanded it down. Any way you want to do it, just get the ridge off of it, get the lettering off so they can be stacked up and glued together like this. The other thing we need to do before we glue them together is get a split in them like this because the diameter of this coupling is meant to fit tight over the pipe and therefore it's too tight to slide back and forth to make this sliding door. So what you need to do is increase the diameter of this by sawing a slit in each one of these. Oops, that's the one. And then we're going to put a spacer in here to space it out and make increase the diameter slightly. And what we're going to use for a spacer is, you always wondered what you were going to do with those political signs in your yard? Jerk one of them up and take the legs off of it. And we're going to cut a piece. Well, it's 11 and 3 8 inches long. And it's going to go right in there like that. In order to get all this assembled where it's going to line up and be nice and smooth inside, we're going to use an old piece of scrap 4 inch pipe. Okay, we're going to take our prepared pieces with the split in. We're going to slide them on a piece, slide them over a piece of old scrap pipe. And you can see that they create their own gap. So you're seeing about what you need, how much they're going to be needed to be separated. So you line those up the best you can. And then for a spacer, what we're going to use is. Uh, those old political signs that they come around and stick in your yard, the legs off of those and the diameter of the wire is just the perfect width for that. So we're going to cut a piece of that. That is, let's see what that is, 11 and 3 8 inches long. 11 and 3 inches, 8 inches long and then we're going to pop it right down in there. It gets everything lined up. That's what we need right now. We're ready to glue. 
Yeah, we're going to put some glue around here. This is a, a plastic epoxy. It has five minute working time. And you see, apply it to both surfaces. Make sure we've got plenty. Pick that up. Okay. Make that one up. These and slide them back on our form. Should get lined up. As you turn them, it kind of actually spreads the glue real nicely. And then you pop the wire back in. And this time, you push that wire down to the bottom, or towards the bottom. And that gives you a nice place to apply some glue in here, which will glue the rod in and glue them together. So you have them glued here and the rod holds them together there. That holds the rod in. When that all sets up, it gets, which will be a good 10 minutes before you ought to take it off here. I'm not going to wait for that. But assuming these are solidly glued together, check the inside before it sets up and see if there's any glue in there that you need to clean off. And then, I like to take a little silicone spray and spray on something like this so the glue doesn't stick in case there's any little glue that happens to eke its way through. that on there and let that set up. Alrighty then, we got our marks made and we're going to drill hard. Okay, I think that's going to line up for easy access for these screws, and you got to countersink them. We got to get a countersink in here so that the screw head. Can you see that? The screw head has to be recessed below this surface so it doesn't drag. You can grind this out with the drill. Just drilling access holes opposite the screws holes on the other side. They don't have to be totally accurate or anything. They're just access holes. Just about 180 degrees away from the holes on the other side. Okay, there are the screws ready to be attached. Here's our access holes from the other side. Get a Phillips screwdriver with a nice long shaft. And we've got another one made. This will be our carrier tube. It's a nine and a half inch long piece of thin wall, three inch PVC. This end will be glued on. It's not too important how tight the glue fits on these. This is a nice handy glue. So I'm just gonna glue one end cap on. Spin it around so it gets evenly distributed. Okay, we need to have some way to hook up the vacuum to each end of this. So we have these two inch Ys that are slipped on here. We slip this on and glue it. Go ahead and bottom it out. So then this will slide up against it. That's the stop for your slide. There's your carrier. That's what we're going to have. Then here, we'll put our flex hose in and hook that up to vacuum cleaner. This is what each end will look like when we get it put up. Sealing the end. I'm not fitting the gobble glue on it because I'm not going to bust it. Okay, 
we just wrapped a piece of one of those uh, nylon scrub pads, cleaning pad around here, and put some Velcro on it. Gives it a nice surface to slide on. There it is, ready to go. piece of one of those uh, nylon scrub pads, cleaning pad around here, put some Velcro on it. Gives it a nice surface to slide on. There it is, ready to go.